Hi everyone, this is Kevin Wagner, the Keto Advocate. In January of 2016, I had the privilege to sit down with ketogenic dietitian Stacy Bissone at the first annual conference on nutritional ketosis and metabolic therapeutics held in Tampa, Florida. Let's see what Stacy had to say. Uh, well, my name is Stacy Bissone and I'm the ketogenic dietitian at All Children's Hospital Johns Hopkins Medicine in St. Petersburg, Florida. And I am the primary ketogenic dietitian there. I only do a ketogenic diet. Um, I have a, a clinic that I run with an epileptologist and I see uh, many patients throughout the month and I see patients to start the diet, um, to wean the diet and to manage the diet. It's actually, just to say up front, it's very important to have a really good ketogenic team. Actually, that's one of the big recommendations um, when you want to start a program um, to administer the ketogenic diet. So um, obviously, we need a, um, a neurologist, in my case, um, for prescribing the diet and managing it medically. Um, you need a dietitian, uh, one that can devote time and that is well-trained, um, has some kind of um, experience with the diet or has um, people that they can rely on mentors and things to help them through that. Um, we also have a nurse practitioner that helps with um, prescriptions, um, some follow-up with questions, kind of troubleshooting. Um, and that's, that's our primary core team. Um, and we function really well together. You need someone that can um, manage these patients together as a team approach. All right. So when Patients uh, go through their introductory phase at, at Johns Hopkins. What, uh, how does the team care for them after that? So we, um, each patient's very individual. Some, some patients require a lot of follow-up and a lot of um, extra education and nurturing. Um, and others um, can become very independent through education, uh, through different resources we provide them. And we basically do it on a patient-by-patient -patient basis. But we do do follow-up once they start the diet. Um, if they're on the classical ketogenic diet, they're going to have more visits uh, as far as getting their lab work done, see how they're doing on their diet. For children, we're very um, um, concerned with their growth and weight. So um, we, we continue to follow them um, throughout their course. Okay. Well, <laughs> it's uh, your high fat, <laughs> very low carb. Um, adequate protein. It's, you know, approximately 90% fat. Um, we do do a lot of um, calorie, um, I don't want to say calorie restriction, but um, we calorie control the diet. So each um, patient, we kind of um, establish what their goal calorie needs are, and then we just go from there as far as um, what kind of diet we're going to administer to them and what kind of uh, division of fat and carb and protein um, we need to provide. Okay, so you find that uh Depending on the patient, they can be on different diets, different, uh, some less restric restrictive than others? Um, yes, and, and some of it may depend on what the, the parent and the patient's capable. Some of these kids are, are very picky eaters. Uh, some may need to be on a more liberal diet to introduce a lot of the foods that are on the ketogenic diet, and then may have a goal or the uh, potential of moving to a classical ketogenic diet if they're um, needing better results for their, for their seizures. Yes. Um, so in our clinic, we see, I don't see any adults. I do see adolescents and some older children. Um, but we use the modified Atkins diet as uh, first for, for older children or for adolescents. We use the modified Atkins to um, give them a quicker start uh, to the ketogenic diet process. Sometimes if there's a delay in when they can start the ke classical ketogenic diet, um, we may use the modified Atkins. Or if, if they're older, they've you know, been eating regular food for 12 years, you know, it's really hard to really restrict your, your diet like that. And they are kids still, too, and they can get into things. So this gives some uh, liberalization of making food choices, eating out, eating at school, um, things like that. So we start the diet um, 10 grams of carbohydrate a day for younger uh, patients, and then some of the older patients and adolescents, we may do 15, or if they're um, a little older than that, maybe 20 grams a day. Okay. So uh, 
What would the typical, uh, so if they're on 10 grams of, of carbohydrates, what would their protein and fats look like? So basically in the beginning, it's really just an education of where the carbohydrates are. Um, so they may have two grams of carbs for breakfast, three grams for lunch, three grams for dinner, and maybe some snacks for the, the leftover grams. So they may divide it up like that. But um, as far as the protein and the fats concerned, we don't really limit their protein, um, but we do encourage them to uh, incorporate fat. So we may talk about the different fat sources and what, what kind of things you can add to these proteins and low carbohydrate foods uh, to get the amount of fat and calories that the, the patient will need. Okay. And as far as calories, how do you determine how many calories uh, they should have? Well, for modified Atkins, there really is no calorie, um, there's no calorie limit, or we're not really counting calories like we would with a classical ketogenic diet. Um, but I find, um, actually, families kind of go through three phases, I've noticed. The, the first phase is um, getting rid of the carbohydrate, and once that happens, suddenly the patient's kind of hungry. <laughs> so that's your key that you're not adding enough fat. So then I tell the parents, um, you need to be looking for ways to add different fat, um, different vehicles, you know, putting butter on meat, um, chicken salad with lots of mayonnaise and oil, hiding different products and drinks, um, whether it be MCT oil or um, cream, things like that. So that's kind of the second phase. And then the third phase is really fine tuning. But I think the calorie part kind of can take care of itself a lot with kids because they're always complaining, mom, I'm hungry and you know, I need something else to eat. So that's kind of the your sign, hey, I need to add more fat. Well, um, not, not particularly. <laughs> um, there are ways to have sweet treats um, using things like stevia, um, some little bits of fruit, some of the fruits that are lower in carb, things like that. I mean, there's plenty of ways to incorporate um, the foods that they like that are not you know, super high carbohydrate, but I really do t basically tell parents that there really won't be any sugar, mm -hmm. so. So are artificial sweeteners uh, okay on the diet? Um, technically, yes. Um, some parents have, um, and, and physicians have positions about um, using some of the different ones. Um, I often recommend stevia, uh, just because it's a, a natural sweetener. It also comes in a liquid, so it's very easy for patients um, to use it in you know, whipping cream, to put it in different um, food products to sweeten it, and it's, you know, you can kind of stir it and mix it in. So some of the kids do use them, and some of the adolescents, especially with some of the older kids. Well, That's what the dietitian I think the first step would have it, you know, kind of really just educating the oncologist about the diet as a whole um, and what the, the goals are of the diet. Um, so that they really understand a little bit more about the different parts that they will play. Um, I think a start to that would be having the dietitian work with the oncologist and possibly even with the neurologist since they're familiar with administering the diet. So I think even starting there would be a, a good place. Um, and maybe um, some parent support groups, I think, if some of these patients got together, um, I think that would drive um, some of the education and some of the um, the chance that you know a team like that could be created right. and uh, executed. Well, there are a lot of there are a lot of good websites um, with Pinterest these days. There's a lot of good um, people to follow with keto boards um, and that have real good recipes that are really something you could fit into what I would consider a medical, you know, ketogenic diet or modified Atkins diet. Um, one of my favorite websites is Ruled Me, um, and it's a ketogenic website for weight loss, actually, the gentleman that started did it for weight loss, but it has a, real, a lot of really good recipes, and the nutrition facts are accurate, and um, it's very creative, which a lot of these um, families can, can be very creative. Right, and with all these diets, uh, the, uh, um, or recipe, it's, mm -hmm. it's getting easier to, to, um, to, to use the diet, right? I mean, it it's, um, used yeah. to be very restrictive, I, I would think. Um, oh, definitely. And even with the availability of different products at the grocery store, I mean, you can get almond flour and coconut flour and coconut oil at your grocery store now. So all those type of products and then the creativity of some of these companies um, in creating different treats or different um, things that you can fill or bake with. Um, I know some of the companies have 
some different powders that you can help incorporate fat um, to help uh, increase your ketones. Um, it's really, it's kind of almost fun. I mean, there's recipe contests and all kinds of fun things. So um, I think if I had to say one thing to patients, like reading about the diet and looking into it, um, I always tell my patients the diet looks really tough on paper. <laughs> so, and when they come to the hospital and we start the diet, the minute they weigh their first their first meal, they're just kind of a look of relief, like, oh, I get this, and right. I can do this. And I think, you know, they go home, they get education, and they can do the diet. And when you see all these great changes, you know, no seizures, you know, improved cognition, um, better learning, maybe less medicines, those type of things make the hard times worth it. Right. So. It's empowering. Yeah. It is. <laughs> it's the best feeling. Yeah. So.